All right. I know it's been a couple days, but we left off where um, Rodeo was being arrested for transporting a minor or having Valerie on the bus with them. So we are starting chapter 39. This sucks, Salvador said. Yeah, man, you can say that, Lester replied, then spat in the dirt at his feet. We were all sitting on a log that was about 10 feet from the highway. The cop was standing off a ways, talking back and forth on his radio. Jaeger was parked and locked up, the keys in the cop's possession. He let us open most of the windows a bit before we got off, but I was still worried about Gladys and Ivan getting too hot in there. By now we'd figured it out. Between what this cop had said and that the pieces was Val, the pieces that Val was able to tearfully choke out to us. Val was not a 19 year old community college student. She was a 17 year old junior in high school. The rest was all true though. The fight with her parents, them not accepting who she was. They hadn't kicked her out exactly, but they told her basically that she could either be who she wanted to be or she could live under their roof, roof not both. They thought she'd surrender. Instead, she'd run away. When she didn't come home or show up at a friend's house, they were sure she'd been adopted by some creep on the mean streets of Minneapolis. Val had said she was sorry about a dozen times until Rodeo had finally said, his hands cuffed behind his back, but his eyes and his voice gentle and sincere. Val, it's all right. I ain't mad at you at all. I'm rooting for you, kid, okay? And she blinked at him a couple times and then started crying again and said, okay. And then, thanks. And I remembered all over again why I love rodeo. Not that I'd ever really forgotten. The cop stomped back over to us with a look on his face like he'd been chewing on lime pills. All right, we got a bit of a situation here and your job is to listen to what I say and then do it. Got it? He shot a tough glare around at all of us like we were a group of hardened convicts or something. Sheriff's office is a little understaffed at the moment and the only other officer on duty is a couple hours away on a domestic call. I can't fit y'all in my squad car and I'm not about to sit around on the side of a highway for a couple hours. So for a second, I thought he was gonna let us all go and my heart started to flutter. But then he grimaced and shook his head at us like it was all our fault. You, pointing at Val, and you, pointing at Rodeo, are coming with me. I'm gonna take you to the sheriff's office where you will call your parents and you will be held until such time as charges are pressed and bail is posted. His gait slithered from Rodeo and Val to the rest of us. You, the cop said, pointing a finger way too close to Lester's face, Lester Washington, you are gonna wait here. I'll be back in 20 minutes and you will be here. I have your driver's license and I have your keys. And if you're not sitting right exactly here when I get back, you're looking at resisting arrest and fleeing the scene of a crime and criminal non-compliance and a heck of a lot more trouble than you want. Understood? Lester just pursed his lips and nodded mm -hmm. and the cop took an angry step closer. Understood? He asked again, raising his voice. Lester looked at him. Yes, sir, Lester said. And that goes for you too, kids, too, he said, turning to me and Salvador and jabbing his ugly finger at us. Got it? Right here. Aren't you gonna handcuff us too? Salvador asked flatly. The cop narrowed his eyes. We don't hand handcuff kids, kid. Salvador just rolled his eyes and looked away. Come on, the officer said, motioning for Rodeo to stand up. Rodeo gave me an apologetic look and rose to his feet and the cop grabbed him by the elbow and started walking him toward the cop car. After just a couple steps though, Rodeo skidded to a halt. He turned and fixed me with a serious, heavy look. You gotta do this little bird, he said. Down through the clouds, go to your roots. Remember Eureka. 
My breath caught. My brain clicked and sparked and sputtered and whirled like Jaeger's engine, roaring awake on a cold winter's morning. I tried to look calm, but I knew my eyes were wider than Salvador's saved hubcap. To most folks, Rodeo's words would have sounded like some hopeless woo-woo hippie non nonsense. I knew this for a fact because the cops snorted and said, I don't got time for your woo-woo hippie nonsense. Get moving. But I knew exactly what Rodeo was telling me to do. I gave him a quick nod, my mind still trying to find traction. He smiled at me, a small smile that had a little encouragement in it, but plenty of worry. And then he turned and let that bully with the badge drag him off toward the police car. And he ducked his head and sat down in the back seat and the door slammed closed behind him. Val, still sniffling, followed the cop's commands and sat in the front seat. Stay put, the cop shouted at us with one more angry point. Then he got in and the cop car started up and peeled away with a spit of dust and gravel, lights and siren blaring. We all sat there watching. Nice guy, Lester said. I looked at the glum pair of folks I was sharing that log with. Lester looked troubled but stubborn, eyebrows furrowed in anger but chewing his lip anxiously. Salvador looked kind of sad and kind of scared and kind of mad at the same time. I'm guessing I looked kind of freaked out, maybe a little excited, but mostly freaked out because I wasn't totally sure what was gonna happen next but I was totally sure that when that cop and his pointing finger came back in 20 minutes, I sure as heck wasn't gonna be there. In a private comment, answer two questions. One, how old is Val really? And two, Why would Lester not just be able to take off with the bus and take her where she wants to go? Two questions. How old is Val, really? And why can Lester not just get onto the bus and take off and take Coyote where she wants to go?